Hello guys, it's Ryan Ho back with another video. Today we're gonna to compare two big company planar headphones together. So one is the AutoZ MM100. The other one is the Hyphenman HE6SC V2. Now what makes these two headphones special is they're both, first of all, open back planar headphones. And they're both around the same price. This is about $400 and this is about $509 refurbished. So these two headphones are interesting because they're based off their flagship headphones. So we have the MM100 right here that is actually based off of the LC5 that kind of trickled down to MM500 now to this headphone. So it's based off of 4,500 headphone. And then the HE6 SCV2 is based off the HE6, which is Hyperman's old flagship headphone. And that was about 1,800. And then they made the HE6 SE, which was also $1,800. And then they made this one, which is $1,800, but Really, you find it on sale for like $600 to $400 on Adorama. And then now I think they just sell off their website for like $500. So that's what we have here. So basically we have two kind of flagship trickle down headphones to compare. So let's talk about the advantage and disadvantage of each headphone and you kind of figure out which one is the right one for you. So when comparing these two headphones, we can kind of see the build quality. I do think the Odyssey is better built. The AT6 is kind of based off the $150 headphone, so it's, you know, not really a comparison. I mean, this headphone does have yokes right here. It does have a metal grill, and the headband's actually pretty nice with the clicks. At least for me, I do think the clicks are a little bit more, you know, widespread in the sense that, like, more people probably are comfortable with these adjustment versus this adjustment. So that that is a little bit advantage, but um, the cups don't really turn much. As you can see, you got full entire pivot with this so this is better in the sense of that and then as well as the pads and the quality like i mean this grill is just so much nicer the yokes is really nice it actually uses magnesium and then steel for the headband so it's definitely you know built really sturdy and the pads do feel noticeably higher quality and nicer and more comfortable so honestly to me there is kind of no comparison in the build now the comfort I also do think the Odyssey is a little bit more comfortable, mainly because it's a lighter weight. So this actually measured 460 grams. This one was 513 grams. So it is like almost 50 grams heavier on the Hyphen Man. So yeah, that's pretty significant as well. And you know, when it comes to the headband, I do find that this one, because it's lighter and the headband is just a little bit more comfortable, I guess. I mean, they're both comfortable for me, but I think the lightweight really makes a difference. And the pads are nice and plushy on this, and they kind of clamp just a little bit better, so it feels like it's very secure. Well, I feel like this headphone just kind of lies there slightly on my head, and they do find these pads right here to be scratchy sometimes, but once I got used to it, it wasn't that bad on these stock pads. But yeah, overall, comfort also goes to the MM100. All right, so let's talk about everyone's favorite thing, sound. So the general sound profile of the Odyssey is obviously a studio slash mid forward type of sound. So it has really good full mid range as well as really deep sub bass. And then the treble is a little bit more towards the lower treble, mid treble versus the upper treble versus for on the Hyphen Man. The Hyphen Man is more of, I guess, the Hyphen Man signature. So it has, you know, both of these have flat bass, right? But when it gets to the mid-range, the high man likes to kind of dip their mid-range back a little bit. And what that causes the kind of effect is to make the sound stage sound a little bigger when the vocalists sound like they're singing from further away. And all the mid-range is just kind of pushed back a little bit more. And then it kind of comes back alive on the treble. So there's a little bit more treble emphasis here. And I do think in general, the treble of this is really, really good. In the bass, the thing I notice about the Odyssey over the Hyphen Man is that it is more sub bass focused, at least that's what it sounds like. It's more even from the bass and the sub bass versus on the Hyphen Man, it, you can hear much more of the mid bass and less of the sub bass. So depending on the type of music you're listening to, you know, if you have more mid bass, which is more common than in those type of music, this will sound more punchy and more fun sounding. Well, if you like more, you know, deeper sub bass music, then this one will sound more fun. I actually do think in some ways this one sounds cleaner because of the sub bass, so you get more definition down there. And actually headphones, especially open back headphones that have good sub bass quality is actually really rare. 
the type of headphones that have good, you know, mid bass quality is a lot of them, but having quality sub bass is definitely a rare thing and a better aspect in my opinion. So in that sense, I do think the Odyssey does perform better because it's a much rare attribute to have, right? Now, the other thing is people like to talk about like dynamics and punchiness. And really, I do think when it comes to the hi -fi man, it does sound a little bit more punchy in the mid bass, but this one, like I said, it has just more of that deeper subwoofer type of feel that comes out. And so in that sense, I also feel like it's more punchy in that way. So like, it's really weird. They kind of trade blows in kind of different areas, in my opinion. As always, these two are, you know, relatively flat bass. So you're not going to get a boosted bass like most consumer headphones. So they're still going to, you know, I like using them on like amplifiers that have like an EQ adjustment for bass to sound a little bit more fun. But yeah, just warning you guys, you are still flat bass, right? So let's talk about the mid-range. The mid-range is not a close contest. The Odyssey absolutely just destroys the iFan in the mid-range, in my opinion. This one sounds forward, natural, really lovely, really great. This one sounds like it's really, really far away. And it does somehow kind of mess with me because a lot of times you kind of listen to headphones or like your car speakers or, or your AirPods or something. They sound more like this. This just has a more unique mid-range tuning. Now, it's not a bad thing. Some people actually enjoy that, but this definitely sounds more normal, more natural, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are gonna like this over that. So easy win for the Odyssey for just, everything just sounds so much better because of the presentation. Now, we talk about the treble. That's where it gets a little interesting. I think in the treble, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. This one is, Almost, you know, I, the more I listen, the more like I can see how this could be a little bit spicy in the lower treble. Like it definitely pushes the boundary a little bit down there. And here on this high for man, it's actually much more even between kind of the treble, the lower treble to the upper treble. And it sounds a little bit more complete. I do find that the Odyssey kind of lacks in the upper treble. So like, I feel like the notes kind of rise. And then once they hit like the apex, they kind of just stop. So like, I think the word people say is the trouble extension doesn't seem that well, but it seems like the trouble reaches a point and then you can't really hear much of it versus the high man has a nice finish to a lot of their notes. The trouble just keeps extending forever and it kind of sounds just more complete in my opinion. So that's why I'm gonna give the trouble to the high man for a better balance and more trouble extension. And I think that does make a big difference. I'm not surprised that the Odyssey kind of ends like that because if you've heard the original LCD5 and the um, MM500, they're just a little bit darker on the very top. So it is kind of in the same vein as those headphones. So then that leads us to the soundstage and imaging. Honestly, when it comes to soundstage, the hi man does sound bigger to me. Now I would say it's like that much bigger. I would say if I picked an arbitrary number, it sounds like maybe 15% bigger to me. Now you compound the fact that the hi man does sound bigger and it has a, you know, more, the mid range is kind of more you know, sucked out or scooped out, which gives you the kind of illusion of more soundstage as well. Then I would say, yeah, the hi man definitely sounds like it's a bigger um, sound staging type of headphone. The Odyssey is no slouch, honestly. It's still a planar. It's still bigger sound stage than a lot of other headphones just next to the HE6. It might not be as special right there. The imaging to me is also, well, it's not close in my opinion. The hi man definitely lacks a little bit of center imaging and this Odyssey definitely is better in that sense. Like I definitely play better in games with this one. So I was playing Valorant as well as always. I could really just pinpoint the enemies a lot better in the center versus the Hyphen Man. I feel like I can hear things up to like, you know, like right here. Then I feel like this kind of middle area is a little bit lacking on the Hyphen Man. And I have to kind of guess a little bit more in this kind of center area. So the Hyphen Man is still very good, very usable. I'm just saying like, you know, if I'm comparing which one is better, the Odyssey is better in my opinion. So this kind of leads me to like the overall like conclusion between these two. Like I asked myself like which one sounds more detailed to me, right, of these two headphones. And honestly, both of these headphones are actually very, very detailed, but it really it came down to the whole part of kind of, you know, this one has deeper sub bass, this one has more refined treble in my opinion, but 
in the mid range, that's where it's not really close, right? Like the Odyssey is just much more forward, much more present, and it just sounds much better for both male and female vocals. They just sound super natural, while this one really just kind of pushes them out, and it sounds, you know, a little unnatural to me. And so, in the end of the day, like tuning aside, even just like, you know, the technical performance of these headphones, I honestly think they're really, really close. Honestly, I don't think anyone will be sad with either one in the sense of technical performance. I actually com comparing these to like the dynamic headphones like the Sennheiser and the Bears, and both of these are so far ahead of those. It's kind of insane, but that's, you know, next week's video. But yeah, I also forgot to, you know, point out one big difference between these two headphones. That is the power requirements is what people call it. So in the realm of headphones, the H6 does have a famous reputation as the hardest to drive headphone, I can confirm that this thing makes me turn my amplifier the highest. Now, I think people kind of overblow how hard this is to drive, in my opinion. They kind of forget about other things like, you know, the good properties of an amp, like a class A amp, you know, having a good power supply and et cetera. And, you know, there's a few things people forget, but yes, this will require an amplifier while this can run on like a phone. I mean, I've ran this on the phone too, but I have to admit that the volume you know, it could be a little louder for me too, so I wouldn't recommend people use a phone for this because it might not get loud enough. Yeah, so you definitely need an amplifier for this, while this one is easier to run. So if you were wondering why I ran this, I actually ran both of these single-ended into my iFi iCan. The thing puts out 14 watts of power. It's a class A amplifier. It's a balance amplifier. I could keep going on. You guys can watch the review that I made of the ICANN. It's a beast of an amplifier. So yeah, it definitely has more enough power to run the HE6. So in conclusion, I do think the Odyssey is kind of the one that I would recommend for most people. First of all, you can actually buy it for like new <laughs> right now. The second thing is that the Odyssey has a better build, easily a better build. And then the third thing is I do think the sound is much more normal as a studio headphone. So it does have that better overall mid-range, especially than the Hypha Man, as well as, you know, some traits in the sub bass are also better, right? So in my opinion, I do think this one is the winner for me, even though I am choosing between, you know, two of my children, two of my favorite headphones, right? But I do think if I was going to tell you guys to get one, I would say it would be the Odyssey. And yeah, so my next videos are probably going to be the comparison to the Bayer Dynamic Tiger 300R. And then I also have a Sennheiser headphone, which is the HD 58X. So I'll do that comparison to the MM100 if you guys are interested to hear that as well. Because it's kind of interesting because... Now I'm going to be comparing basically dynamic drivers that are a little bit cheaper to a planar and kind of see, you know, what's the biggest difference between those two. It's definitely going to be an interesting video. So you guys don't want to miss out on that. So subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.